At first glance, this might be one of the strangest, ugliest, and most disjointed stadiums you have ever seen. But there's a lot more to this place than just how it looks. It even holds secrets. This is Bobby Dodd Stadium, the home of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, and it may be the most polarizing stadium in all of college football. It might not be pretty to look at, but those who love it are quick to jump to its defense, even angrily. Let's have an argument, shall we? And all that's coming up right after this. Week two is here, and maybe it isn't just about how your team did. Maybe it's about how you do when you apply your football knowledge. What am I talking about? I am so excited to announce I have partnered with Underdog, the best app to play fantasy games, where you can win cold hard cash. And right now, the CD Lamb free pick is active, and you can get a first time deposit bonus of up to $1,000 by using my code 5 points at underdogfantasy.com. Let me show you how Pick'em works. In my opinion, the easiest way to play and win. You simply pick two to eight stats of your favorite players and choose whether they will go higher or lower. And if you go five for five, you can win 20 times your money. Look at this, with the CD Lamb free play, I can turn a $10 entry into $145. Damn, son. So after this video, head to underdogfantasy.com and use my promo code five points or hit the link below and get started right away. Again, you can support this channel and my content by heading over to underdogfantasy.com and use promo code five points to get your free CD Lamb play and first time deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Bobby Dodd Stadium was first built over a century ago in 1913, and it is the oldest continually used stadium in all of college football. Originally called Grant Field, football actually began being played here in 1905, but then permanent grandstands were installed eight years later. And over the next 112 years or so, changes would happen to both the stadium and the surrounding area. That's called foreshadowing. In 1916, the stadium hosted the biggest blowout in college football history, with Georgia Tech beating Cumberland College 222 to zero, as a pissed off coach John Heisman, yes, from the Heisman Trophy, beat a team out of existence as revenge for a baseball game? By 1925, the lower bowl was completed and the stadium kind of looked like a horseshoe. Then the press box was added in 1947, and from 1958 through 1968, the upper decks were added in stages, bringing the capacity up to 58,000. 1985 saw the Wardlow Center built in the south end zone, which has a field house and offices in it. But in the early 2000s, things would dramatically change for the stadium. For the better, I don't know. 2002 saw the erection of this structure, the North Stands, a massive upper deck that wraps around the North End Zone. This might be the most odd feature of the stadium as it seems out of place and not congruent with the rest of the architecture. That addition brought the stadium to its current look and the only changes that will be done in the near future are the addition of the Fanning Center in the Northeast part of the stadium, which will be a multi-purpose building to house a gym and a sports medicine facility. To say overall this place looks odd, disjointed, incongruent, or outright bizarre is not invalid. I'm going to first tear into the stadium and then tell you why it actually isn't bad at all. Georgia Tech fan, relax. Please wait until the end of this video to comment because I can already tell you're getting angry. Chill, bro. The case against Bobby Dodd. First off, the north end zone stands look ridiculous. You have this overhang here to the bottom right that makes no sense and the stands are truncated by this building, adding to the asymmetrical imbalance of this stadium. I get that the goals here were to add capacity and better views of the field, and that was definitely accomplished, but aesthetically, these stands are borderline vomit-inducing. Then here on the west side, you have more asymmetry, a low slope angle on both decks, and the second tier looks tacked on and out of place. On the east side, more of the same, but the imbalance makes this place look like a typical high school field with big stands on the home side and smaller stands on the visiting side. Mind you, this is a large D1 program. Now, I will say this, the Wardlow Center is fine. Many college stadiums do this, placing a large building in one end zone. That's the only thing that isn't necessarily ugly here. Overall, 
from Google Earth, this stadium looks like shit. But enough dunking on this place from a look standpoint, let me explain why it looks this way. The case for Bobby Dodd. There are three main reasons why the stadium looks this way. Those are location, location, and location. The Georgia Tech campus is located in downtown Atlanta, and this might have been a cow pasture or some shit in the early 20th century, but now it's in the middle of one of the largest cities in America. There simply isn't enough room for a football stadium. Even down the road where the Falcons play at Mercedes-Benz Arena, it's surprisingly cramped. Why do you think the Braves moved out to BFE Cumberland? Next, we have the surrounding historic buildings, the iconic Georgia Tech Tower on the west side, and you have the original campus dorms over here on the east side. These are identifying buildings for the entire university, and they aren't going anywhere. To expand the stadium's footprint would destroy the identity of the entire school, and to me, that's unacceptable. The east side stands are truncated by Techwood Drive, the only piece of land that you could possibly expand into, but that would be dumb. The road is vital to accessing the campus and you can't just move it over. The parking lot that is I-85 is behind the dorms, further cramping the space. So you can't go outwards. The only answer would be up. Now, why are the stands shaped this way? This makes sense when you zoom in at ground level. The North End stands have a spectacular view of downtown Atlanta and their shape perfectly aligns to the skyline. I bet you it's breathtaking in person. At field level, you can also understand why the West Side stands are higher than the East Side stands. And that's on purpose to maintain their views of the city and the skyline. Now, one argument I will make is, yo, this is a football stadium. The stands should be focused on football but maybe this is the one exemption to the rule that we should make. Also, if you have seen Georgia Tech play football over the past decade, you'd understand that the city views are probably your best option. Y'all should know that I'm an Auburn fan. I am not a Georgia fan. It, this is not personal. Now, I'm about to blow your mind. The stadium has a really cool secret. The West End stands were built directly over the original stands from Grant Field. And those stands are preserved underneath like a time capsule, the vintage bricks and concrete hidden from view. These were the stands from 1925 until 1947 when they were quietly built over them, explaining the low slope. The area is used for storage now, but probably also a really cool place for a grad student who works in the stadium to take a co-ed down there to finger blast after a yellow jacket blowout. Lastly, by all accounts, the atmosphere in the stadium is electric for a big game. They have a lot of traditions like the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, and that's something you can't know about until you experience it. I'm sure the game, the views, the charm, and the traditions all add up to an experience that overcomes the not so pretty parts about this stadium. And as an average looking guy who dates way above his league, I can both appreciate and relate to that. So how could we fix Bobby Dodd? Honestly, without tearing down completely and rebuilding from scratch, there isn't much you can do here. And why would you? Personally, I like to see symmetrical stadiums that are interconnected and allow easy access from one area to another, but that's never going to happen here. Like I said, they're adding a new building in the northeast corner, and of course it will add more charm and asymmetry to the most kit bash stadium in all of college football. But hey, it belongs to them, so don't change a thing. Well, thanks for watching. Please, please subscribe. I make football videos and don't forget to use my code five points at underdog from the link below or in the app to get up to a $1,000 bonus for a first time deposit.